we are today at Bernie Grinman's studio as we begin to do our first recording for a direct disc a compliment to my Julie London tribute album. I don't know why, but I'm feeling so sad. The recordings we're doing today, we're really looking for the sound to be as natural and realistic as possible. And have a party in that big Cadillac. The music is first. You know, the audio is great. It's like frosting on the cake and all of that. If you set up everything just for the sound, it's probably just going to lay there. We know it's going to be clean and a good sound, but we want it also to be mechanically good so that you can your record player won't skip and jump around. Plus, you were hanging out on that lathe a lot. Yeah. A yeah, that, boatload. Yeah, but that's the biggest challenge. Right, on a direct disc. It's trying to get the right groove. Yeah. You know, have it cut properly so that you can play it back. Right, right, right. You know. I wanted to do a direct to disc because it's a live recording and Julie was a live performer. We're doing some that were from the previous Julie London, but new ones are coming in. So we needed to have some practice sessions. Let there be you. Let there be I, you know, all of the process of getting organized, getting the guys organized, it, it all falls on the producer. Now that I'm the producer, and also the singer, it, it adds a little more drama to my morning. Let there be wind. We are creating four arrangements on songs we have not yet covered. Because they're not taped, we'll probably just stop and start if we have. Uh, in addition, we're going to check the charts on arrangements that we've already done to make sure that they're accurate enough. So that when we go into the actual session, we are totally prepared. Is everybody good? I had heard about Alan's sides, introduced my London recording to Alan. He thought it was marvelous and uh, said he'd love to work on it. He's really the oh, ultimate audiophile. It, it's really crisp, but things are a little dark. You can just put a touch in, and it gives you that thing without sounding like you did. You're the orchestrator of a beautiful album. Alan goes way, way back. The thing about direct disc is that it's just the sound of the mics plugged into the console going straight to the cutting lathe is just so free, it's so open sounding that you're bypassing all these generations. Yeah. So it has this sort of openness and freshness that people rarely hear. Yeah. It's the needle as it's going making the grooves. If there's a big pops. S or there's a low frequency pop or there's pop. some sort of oh, wow. a, a thing goes out of control, With then velocity. the disc is ruined. It's just extremely difficult to do. Yeah. <laughs> when I begin the process of thinking of a song, I also think of the musicians that I want to work on it because there's, there's a feel I'm wanting to come out of it. I have Atmaro Ruiz as the primary pianist. Now this is as pure of a capture of, of a performance as it gets. It uh, doesn't get any better than that. Right? I also have Mike Lang. These are major studio and uh, performing musicians. I know it's not normally done, but it's a directed disc. It's live. It's as we would yeah. be on stage. I'm cool with that. Now, if you cough, we're kind of stuck. And if I get a, a sibilance that jumps the needle, right, we're, we're really stuck because we've got to start all over again. Let there be love. The way Julie did this song, it was kind of a hot, happy, very, I want to say, mischievous sounding. Let there be you, let there be me. Yeah, we had to bring in an entire recording studio. Consoles, mics, cables, everything that a recording studio entails, we had to bring in. It's all good. Am I nervous? No, I don't have to play. I have never done a director disc. This is exciting and really looking forward to it. You get one chance to play, get it right. To me, I'm not as nervous as I might be, but I haven't started. So I think once we actually begin the recording, I might get more nervous than I am right now. Okay, here we go. There is nothing that can measure the subtleties and the resonances, in, especially in acoustical instruments. The only thing that's going to tell you is your ear. I have to figure out how to get it on the disc mm -hmm. without any mechanical problems. Right, popping, so, jumping, well, and things that could Yeah, happen. so that it won't do that when it's right. played back. Right. So I have to be very careful of how I cut it, how to space the grooves, how deep to cut the grooves. All of these things need to be calculated. So I have to make a guess. The groove that we're getting on my record yeah. is all based on you and what you heard as opposed to a computer that normally does that in a, yeah, in a yeah. typical yeah. mastering situation. Yeah, this is so your art at this point. That's with, so cool. With, uh, having looked at a lot of grooves over I know, the last I know, I know, 50 I know. years, nursing, you know, I, the, nursing. I, I remember when I started out, we didn't have sophisticated computers. Right. 
I've been working with Bernie here a little over 22 years. I worked with Bernie at A&M Records from uh, 1972 until Bernie left in 1984. Uh, we're going to capture it uh, quarter inch on a modified ATR 102. Alan Sides, the engineer, he liked the sound of the 468 tape, so I'm getting it biased. When you listen to the digital, it sounds great, but when you listen to the analog, you feel like you're back in the room again. It's the physics. It's the physical contact. Digital is a bunch of ones and zeros where uh, vinyl, you have a needle in physical contact with a groove. There's a romance that digital doesn't actually give you. And this is exciting. They have built a studio in Bernie Grunman's lobby. You have legends like John Chiodini, Luis Conte, and Chuck Verhofer. So I, I'm beyond excited to make music with them. It's either the first take is the best, always and then it kind of goes downhill from there. So this will be more like a live job. You saw me standing alone Without a dream in my heart For me, I went from Route 66, yeah. okay? to Pink Cadillac, which is yeah, rock and rolling, to Lover Man, I had to go change my mind yeah, yeah, yeah. totally yeah, in no. three seconds and come up with a new attitude and a painful delivery. Yeah, that, yeah. No, 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 it's, it, it is very, it's very difficult. Yeah. Bernie has built his reputation on extremely high profile albums. Uh, Thriller is one of the premier albums. Anyone that you can probably mention that he hasn't done their records, it's Diana Krall, Barbara Streisand, he's the go-to guy. And so this whole system is built by us. It uses analog. We do use some digital stuff and so forth for pop things. In the case of Lynn's record, a signal going to that disc is all analog from beginning to end. I could take it in a place that you don't want to go. Right. You now could. that doesn't mean that it's wrong, mm -hmm. but it's wrong for you. Right. You know, you want it maybe a little more romantic or a little more something or a little more aggressive or whatever it is that mm -hmm. you're looking for. And I might hear it a little differently. So that's why I kind of need to know, get a, a little bit of feedback from the artist a lot of times. You know, because it's a joint effort. Yeah. We're, we're all trying to get to the same place. You know, it's got to be done right the first time, in a sense. Make sure that the lacquer's going to be a good disc for playback. Because remember, it's mechanical. You have this little stylus that's trying to follow sometimes a very radical groove. And so if it's not a good playback system, it's not going to follow it properly and you're going to get distortion. So we don't want to make it too dynamic or too powerful in certain areas of the spectrum. Well, it goes from St. Louis down to Missouri. Oklahoma City looks so, so pretty. You'll if it's done properly, it can sound phenomenal. Love, let her stray from your heart. Now that I've done this, I mean, I tell you in a heartbeat, no matter all the stuff we went through, and I still go through, uh, it's like the pinnacle of my recording career. That, that doing that took such I didn't realize how much guts it really took to do that. When it comes right down to it, what you're end, trying to end up with is helping this recording or this performance connect emotionally with the listener better and more completely. And take that California trip. Get your kicks on Route 66. Get your kicks on Route 66. Let's meet on Route 66. I've got you under my skin. I've got you. Part of me.